Welcome to Offsite Ready, the project which delivers knowledge for change. The aim of the project is to increase the knowledge and skills capabilities of trainers and industry on offsite construction. Offsite construction offers many benefits. The factory environment provides a cleaner and safer place of work. Afterwards, in the construction stage, the rapid component-based installation of off-site systems can ensure that the project is also delivered on time. Today we are filming at the Trimble Technology Lab at Napier and we will show you a few tools including SketchUp Pro, Techlet Eds, a drone and a scanner. Welcome everyone to the national online launch of Offsite Ready, the project which delivers knowledge for change. My name is Kay Keenan and I am the project manager of the Offsite Ready project. This is a CITB funded initiative and is brought to you in collaboration between Construction Scotland Innovation Centre, Edinburgh Napier University, City of Glasgow College, MOBI, Class of Your Own and Construction Wales Innovation Centre. We are delighted that you have joined us today to find out more about how you can access our educators toolkit that can and will equip trainers and educators in all areas of off-site. This flexible programme is free and easy to use. It offers educators and trainers in the built environment and construction a series of, tra of relevant training materials that can be integrated into existing courses. Alternatively, it can also be used as a standalone course for those who deliver training within the construction sector. Today, we will show you how to use our free accessible training material and you will also be hearing from some of our industry partners who all have a breadth of knowledge and expertise within the sector. Before we start today, just to go over some housekeeping with you. All subscribers are, are on mute throughout the session, but we want you to actively participate by sending us through any questions you have. There is a Q&A button which can be accessed at the bottom of your screen. If you click here, then one of your questions will be sent through and our expert panellists will, will answer them for you. Your input and participation are an invaluable part of this experience and it will also help us improve our training moving forward. Please note that some of our sessions have been pre-recorded due to the high volume of participants on the webinar. So first things first, we're going to hear from Dr Mila Duncheva and Professor Robert Hairstands. Mila and her team at Edinburgh Napier Uni have created the learning material for the project and Robert is the head of the Centre for Offsite and Innovative Structures. Um, so hello and welcome everybody. Uh, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about the offsite construction sector and we've got Professor Robert Hestans here with us. Uh, Robert, do you want to do a little introduction to who you are? Hi, um, so I'm Robert Hestans of Edinburgh Napier University and we are of course actively engaged with this offsite ready project to develop the knowledge for change uh, and the delivery of the built environment. Awesome, yeah, that, that's great. And now, Robert, we've done quite a lot of work uh, in the offsite sector in the UK. I was wondering, do you have an opinion on how you could describe the offsite sector at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. The UK is uh, a very interesting market with respect to, to offsite construction. Uh, it's got a real history of it, uh, which often isn't thought of per se. Um, it, you know, it dates back to even the delivery of crook frames by carpenters in the medieval times where they used to sort of pre-manufacture uh, the frames themselves, uh, mark them up prior to their installation on, on site. Um, so it's sort of quality shootings, I guess. Obviously, you know, things have moved on quite substantially since then. Um, there's been uh, you know, things like the Latham and Egan report, uh, and more recently the, the Farmer report, all talking about the need to, to change construction and indeed change sort of construction culture. And correspondingly, the UK has, um, you know, a large sort of driver as such towards the utilisation of more pre-manufactured approaches, of which off-site construction is 
a, a main entity too, and things like the recent House of Lords uh, report, uh, you know, created a presumption in favour of offside construction. Uh, so there's a UK government backing, and indeed uh, in a Scottish context, there's a Scottish government backing, uh, and even this sort of Welsh assembly. Uh, there's a large sort of um, UK uh, political drive as such as well uh, to to the utilisation of offside construction approaches, um, and. A lot of that has been as a result of need for uh, housing delivery, affordable housing. Um, so residential is a, is a key constituent to this. Uh, circa 300,000 houses per annum required in the UK. And roughly half to two thirds of that are actually built. Um, so there's, there's challenges in terms of delivery of, of housing. Um, but it's not just housing, there's infrastructure, schools and hospitals, um, uh, nursing and, and, and care facilities. Um, so offsite construction is seen uh, to be a, a player in, in, in these different different markets. Um, so th there's there's definitely a, a move towards it, uh, and as as there's in that respect, there's been a lot of investment into it, and we're seeing organisations such as Langer Earth, uh, there's been Elkie Homes, uh, Swan Housing Association, Urban Splash. In the Scottish context, there's been a collaboration of offsite solutions Scotland, uh, looking to collaborate for scale within within the market market here. So there's a real emphasis behind uh, off-site as an approach to the delivery of the, the built environment. Yeah, so it sounds like it's it's growing, there's lots of new partnerships and you mentioned you know how we need to deliver more and more homes. I'm always thinking yeah, how much we deliver is one point but how well we deliver it is also important and we have been reading a lot of uh, articles as well as reports by the government recently about how important productivity is you know not only nationally but internationally as well so how efficiently are we using our labor force do we need to upskill them for off-site construction and in the mix of that you mentioned there's a need for more investment um so it sounds like this to me, it sounds like there's a lot of different factors. Um, could you maybe explain to us what you think the drivers, the exact drivers are for offsite construction in the UK? Sure, yeah, that's a really good question. As, as you know, we've, we've worked mm. uh, together on, on that uh, and did a lot of research to really look at how these, what these drivers are within the current context. You know, I mentioned historically things like quality issues productivity and skills being key drivers and those drivers still remain uh, key in the current context. Uh, quality assurance in terms of ensuring there isn't a gap in performance from what's been specified. Productivity, uh, as we know the construction sector's productivity has stagnated uh, and there's a necessity to improve upon that. Offsite, a manufactured uh, approach facilitates improve levels of productivity because of its factory-based nature um, and of course uh, you know skills there's a skills crisis um, that a need to attract uh, individuals into construction as a, as a career um, and things like off-site facilitate that through this uh, clean working environment the opportunities for uh, higher levels of uh, diversification simple things like shift patterns uh, and, and providing a career pathway. So those three drivers still remain. Uh, but we also have these things that we need to improve upon, such as culture. We have the, the regulatory drivers as we, we move towards a more efficient uh, built environment. Um, we need, and, uh, I need to have uh, use more digital technologies within the construction system. Digital is another key driver. In, in the mix. So I, I would sort of list the current ones as being productivity, sustainability, regulatory, culture, digitization and human capital. The, the drivers will always evolve and going forward, but the, the key drivers are, are those six that, that I've listed uh, and, and how off-site construction pre-manufactured approaches can respond to the intersection of those drivers within the current current context. Um, now, I'm quite curious that you mentioned some of the drivers were quite positive, you know, sustainability, uh, increased environmental performance, increased productivity, increased efficiency. And all of these, in, in my opinion, probably differ slightly for different projects. But it does seem that culture is a little bit more overright, overarching, you know, it inf influences everything else. And it also seems to be more of a challenge. Um, do you have any thoughts on how we can actually solve and tackle this cultural challenge? Yeah, it's really 
It's a big one, isn't it? Uh, it's a big, it's a big question. Um, you know, everyone's aware of the sort of farmer report, the modernise or die necessity to change the the, the, con- the construction culture to move away from sort of adversarial approaches. Uh, the necessity to change that the procurement process, the contractual setup, um, and, and harness and, and utilise more collaborative ways of working. Uh, and these digital platforms certainly facilitate uh, more collaborative ways of working uh, as we move forward into uh, using higher levels of, of, of BIM uh, and the ultimate goal of, sort of reaching digital twins. Uh, and as we harness that data and make that data transparent, uh, utilising sort of lean thinking, um, the more that we can engage the end consumer and the, the client in this sort of decision making uh, process and uh, look towards enhanced levels of uh, factory based approaches. So that that's all about a change in mindset, it's all about a change in, in, in co- uh, construction culture, moving towards a more collaborative approach for delivery. Uh, it's about utilising the tools and technologies and systems and factory that's available to us for the delivery of that built environment. And the overarching for that is, is this culture uh, and this culture of collaboration and, and collaborating towards the delivery of a more efficient uh, built environment which has within a, a higher level of, of value. So we're not just thinking about lowest cost, lowest quality forms of delivery, we're thinking about that full value proposition uh, and the value of those assets in the built environment for you know 50, 100 years plus, uh, and all of that to be underpinned by a quality assured factory based approach. So very much uh, culture has to change, mindset has to change, and we have to be more collaborative in terms of the delivery of the built environment in that respect. Yeah, and I do think that some of those key points you're talking about, more collaborative approach, almost more open platform component of parts, etc. These are all things that the younger generation is really, really interested in, um, as well as all those high technology BIM, you know, BIM models. Um, we've got digital twins. I mean, how how exciting is that? Having a complete virtual digital twin, we can measure measure the carbon, or you can measure the cost, you can compare the time. You know, that that's that's so amazing. So. To me, that sounds like something that can also help to get people that change in culture can actually help to drive more people into the built environment as a career path, um, which, which is obviously something we also need as well. And once they're in the built environment, um, we also need to upskill them with all these new technologies, with all these collaborative ways of working uh, and also that you know broader change in mindset that we're talking about um, i know you've done some work in this area do you know what works well as a pathway to that to that change in culture to that upskilling yes yeah absolutely so yeah i mean i think you had a number of key points there in terms of you know it, it's not just about changing the, the perception of the customer, the client. It's it changed the perception of you know the parents, the teachers, <laughs> the kids in the classroom to think of construction as as a career of, of choice, uh, and to offer them or demonstrate to them the opportunities that reside within it. Um, so they think of it as a as a career pathway, and within that career pathway, it you know there'll be real opportunities to shape it. And for them to shape their own their own future, um, and and by so doing shape the future built environment. Where you know at the end of the day we spend eighty to ninety percent of our lives living there. So who wouldn't want to be at the heart of, of trying to create that and, and shape it? And doing so in an efficient and effective manner, uh, using uh, you know a factory based approach uh, empowered by uh, lean thinking. Um, so with that in that respect if we can if we can demonstrate that to to high school kids um and use things like design engine construct delivered by class of your own and what we've done at edinburgh napier through sort of built environment exchange process is have our students uh, facilitate the delivery of that in the classroom so providing that that mentorship piece of, of trying to create a, a more environmentally and sustainable responsible built environment in the realms of things like the circular economy. So that whole thought process um, and envision people to think of that and all the way, you know, to to the likes of the high school students to encourage them onto that built environment environment pathway which they can then shape. 
and I know a lot of the content that's within this offsite ready uh, knowledge for change platform uh, will encourage that that process. So it, it's fantastic to see it uh, get ready uh, so that we can start to 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 make that that change and move towards more efficient, effective forms of delivery. Hi, welcome back. That was a fascinating discussion between Robert and Mila. Next up, we're now going to hear from one of our industry panel experts, Nicola Jackson. Nicola is an architect and a technical engineer at Robertson's Engineering. She is also the chair of Offsite uh, Solutions Scotland, a consortium of construction companies and public bodies who work in collaboration to bring a more off-site manufacturing process within the sector in Scotland. So today we have Nicola Jackson here with us. Nicola is an architect and a technical manager at Robertson Timber Engineering. She is also a board member of Offsite Solutions Scotland. So Nicola, thank you for joining us. Um, Nicola, could you tell us a little bit about your role at Offsite Solutions Scotland? Yeah, sure. So currently I'm the chair of Offsite Solutions Scotland. Offsite Solutions Scotland, it's a consortium of nine offsite manufacturers in Scotland. And um, we're working with the, the Scottish Government and academic partners um, to accelerate the application of factory-based solutions to improve delivery, increase quality and reduce waste in construction. And um, we're working together to carry out joint research rather than working separately on similar projects. It's much more effective with us all working together. Yeah, that's excellent. It's a great initiative as well. Um, do, what do you think the kind of overall perspective of offsite construction is in, in, within the construction industry generally? Um, I think the industry is currently at a tipping point um, in offsite being more widely adopted mm -hmm. and I think the industry is realising that we need a much more efficient way of delivering buildings and we can't continue with the, the way that we've done it with the current inefficient site processes. And is there then, uh, uh, could you tell us a little bit about maybe if there's the, the kind of skills and human capital requirement within the offsite construction sector currently? Yeah, as um, off-site manufacturing becomes more advanced, as we're doing more um, in the factory, then I think we'll need people with improved digital skills to effectively manage um, the processes, analyse information, uh, and also program uh, equipment in the factory. Um, we really need people who've got an, an open mindset and they're open to new technologies uh, coming in. And, and it, that's kind of prominent with um, the kind of grassroots levels with a so bringing the the knowledge and skills at an early stage as well do you think that's relevant yeah that's right yeah it is yeah. and um so digital design so design for manufacture and assembly can you talk talk a little bit about that about that and a bit about the difference between traditional construction and off-site construction in terms of digital design yeah, so in terms of um, digital design and, and off-site construction, um, there's different um, parameters that you have to consider at the design stage. Sure. Um, so it, it might take longer at the design stage, but you're resolving those issues before things go to site and before it's more expensive to try and rectify those issues. Um, so at the, at the design stage in off-site manufacturing, you're, you're considering um, how can I optimise the design uh, for the production line in the factory? Like what is the, the maximum uh, wall panel size that can be produced, uh, what's the maximum size that can actually get out the, the factory as well, what's the size of the doors to get it out, what's the optimal load uh, for going um, on the lorry and how can the different panels or volumetric units that you produce be effectively um, assembled on site. Yeah, and you, you mentioned earlier about the, the kind of uh, waste, re reduction in waste, and I suppose that comes in there. It's, from a, an early stage at the design stage, so thinking yeah. about the circular co economy as well. Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're optimising everything for the factory and re reducing the waste. Excellent. Um, so uh, can you t tell us a little bit about your roles, your kind of day-to-day -day roles at um, Robertson Timber Engineering as well, what, 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 as a t technical designer? A technical yeah. manager, sorry. 
Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm at Robertson Timber Engineering, so I'm, I'm a technical manager and my role involves carrying out research and development work to try and advance our off-site manufacturing process. And I'm simultaneously managing uh, system technology, uh, looking at the fabrication process and looking at business development. So I work collaboratively with people in our business um, and also outside the company um, and I'm looking at how we can make productivity savings and also how we can future-proof our products. Sounds like some really exciting work um, going on there. You have a, a wide um, kind of career profile um, sort of training as an architect and working from um, Macker and then moving on to Robertson Timber. Can you tell us a little bit about your career path as well? And in, yeah. in specific, thinking about uh, being an architect and then transi transitioning into offsite construction. Yeah, so after um, completing a, a master's degree in architecture at university, um, I initially started out running my own architecture practice for a few years. Um, I had previous experience from working in an architect's practice from the, the age of 14. So every, every yeah. summer, every holiday that yeah. I had, um, I was working in the, the architecture firm. Um, then the, the opportunity actually came up to work with Neil Sutherland at MACAR um, and I decided I really wanted to work for them as I was interested in their approach of um, designing, manufacturing and delivering the buildings. So they've got an advanced panelised uh, build system and they use okay. ecological building materials and for me um, that was a really important um, experience as it kick-started my interests um, and experience uh, in off-site construction. Um, I then went on to work for Carbon Dynamic and they manufacture um, buildings as volumetric units uh, from CLT mm -hmm. um, and we had a team of plumbers and electricians and engineers all working together um, and so if, if I had any issues um, or queries with the design I could go into the factory and say so work things out with a plumber and work out the most uh, effective way to resolve the issue that's that's easy for, for them to, to build as well. That's excellent because a lot of the time with constru construction, traditional construction, it's, it's quite fragmented and this is making it uh, really collaborative and when you've got these people to hand you can just go and call on for advice um, because they are the, have the expertise. Yeah, absolutely, it's way more efficient. Excellent. And um, so you've been involved in the Offsite Ready project uh, um, as a sort of panel member to, to review the project. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your involvement there as well? Yes, yeah, so in the Offsite Ready project, I was involved in reviewing the learning material for the different modules and I helped to check um, that it aligns with current practice, what, what we're actually doing in the factory at the moment. And I applied my experience of working for offsite manufacturers, both for panelised um, and volumetric build systems. That's excellent. And uh, do you think uh, where, where will the kind of biggest impact be with the Offsite Ready um, teaching material, do you think? I, I think industry. because you're, yeah, you're standardising um, the the knowledge that you're you're taking out to the industry. Um, I think we'll we'll like see people who are a lot more suited um, and who are going to work well um, with the the team in our in our factory. Great. Well, thank you very much, Nicola, and a special thank you to you for your invaluable feedback throughout the project, and um, but also your con uh, continued support as well to the Offsite Ready project and to, to the industry as a whole. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That's thank great. You. Okay, everyone, we're now moving on to the Q&A session. So just to encourage you all, if you haven't uh, yet, the Q&A is located at the bottom of the screen. And if you send through one of your questions related to some of the topics or any technical question you have about off-site, our, our trainers will try and answer them for you. So we've had some really we've had some really good questions coming in. Again, encouraging you all to use the QA box at the bottom of the screen. But a question has come in already for Robert. Robert, somebody's asking referring to what you were discussing with Mila earlier. Can you explain a little bit more about how the digital twin can be used by clients? Sure, that's, that's, that's quite a good question. Um, 
obviously, you know, we're looking to harness digital technologies and issues of digitization within the delivery of the, the built environment. Uh, there's been the uptake of, of BIM in that respect and moving that whole agenda forward into the utilization of uh, or the creation of digital, digital twins. Um, so those digital twins are essentially uh, rich or should be very rich in terms of uh, information, in terms of productivity information, uh, embodied energy, embodied carbon, whole life cycle, uh, value, uh, cost. Uh, and ideally providing a degree of uh, transparency in that respect and integrating the, the full built asset through the, the, the supply chain so you understand um, what that end, end product look like and uh, will ultimately perform. And through, through the, the, the sort of Gemini principles, uh, through Digital Built Britain, um, this, the built asset, uh, you know, essentially uh, can therefore inform the digital model. So there can be a feedback loop into the digital model in order to further enrich the, the, the data and information that resides within it, but also to, to validate um, the predicted performance of it. Uh, and in so doing, you can obviously uh, create enhanced level of information to inform things like your return on investment on that, that built asset or to inform the decision making process in terms of fabric performance uh, and detail and, and the technical attributes or to inform future, future decision making process with respect to the, uh, the, the supply chain. Um, so the digital twin uh, aligning with those Gemini principles uh, must have a, a clear purpose, it must be uh, trustworthy in, in that respect, the, the information also has to have a, a degree of security uh, and it, you know, it must function appropriately in order to, to allow effective decision making to be made and ideally enhance the levels of, of transparency uh, for the client and uh, possibly also the uh, the end customer through visualization of of impact. So the digital twin uh, certainly can look to unlock uh, the potential uh, in many respects of delivering that built environment through offsite construction approaches because inherently it can uh, provide an additional insight into that overarching value proposition rather than thinking of lowest cost, lowest quality uh, delivery methods. Thanks, thanks, Rob. That probably brings us on to the next question, which is more, you know, a, a general question about offsite uh, rather than, than technical. And it's from Neil MacArthur. And Neil is asking us, uh, Mila, I'll pose this to you. Why do you think there is a poor uptake of offsite, not just within the UK, but on an international, you know, internationally as well? Yeah, so that's a really good question, Neil. Um, I would say that it actually varies quite a lot, in my opinion, per region. So in areas like Scotland, we do have about 80-85% of new housing being delivered using timber frame methods, which even though they're only open panels, they're still considered, you know, off-site construction. I do think that, um, again, there's a little bit more of a cultural barrier uh, in other in other places and we're also seeing some uh, legislative barriers at the moment as well uh, but I think you're absolutely spot on in your comment in terms of yeah we, we have seen lots of uh, buildings by port cabin especially in the school sector but again not nearly as much um, as they should be so I do know of a study for example internationally in the USA uh, recently one of our colleagues Ryan Smith uh, was working on a project to get Offsite or modular construction, as they refer to it in the USA, up to 5% of what overall construction is. Um, so I do think that although historically uh, it has evolved historically, but at the moment it's not nearly as dominant as it could and it should be. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that probably leads on to another question we have from one of our participants in Stuart. Um, I'll pose this to you, Robert. He's saying he's worked in social housing for the past 20 to 30 years. And he's saying, you know, offsite manufacturing has yet to prove itself within this, this, this field. So therefore that's possibly why there is a reluctance. So, you know, what do you think, you know, what can, what can we do to address this reluctance, Robert? Yeah, sure. It's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because obviously in Scotland, we have a different context in, in, in many respects with 85% of our houses being delivered through offsite techniques, and obviously a large proportion of that is the delivery of um, affordable housing solutions. And indeed, currently we are uh, working on, well, we've been working with, with Scottish Government in, in terms of the capacity review 
um, which Mila was held involved with, um, as we looked to, to um, you know, uh, improve upon our levels of site delivery. And that that improvement is is not just in terms of percentage market share, but in terms of level of enhancement, moving from sort of um, you know open panel construction uh, through to full closed panels with internal lighting and insulation, ideally windows and doors, uh, potentially also services incorporated into the, the offsite systems. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, offsite has been used, certainly in the, in the public sector, and you know, we're seeing things like Swan Housing Association, as I mentioned, in the, the clip there in Wales. And I know Elke, uh, for example, as well, they, they deliver into uh, affordable uh, affordable housing. Um, I, you know, and I think, so the, there has been a, a move, move towards it. And given the housing needs, given the necessity for improved levels of affordable housing, uh, given the necessity for higher levels of fabric performance, and high levels of quality assurance in, in that respect, then there's going to be a shift change towards uh, a manufactured approach. Um, and as I say, in the Scottish contents, we have a, a good degree of uh, uh, tradition in, in that respect. Uh, you know, with an 85% market share of timber, timber frame, UK wide it, it's circa 25% and, and it's grown uh, year on year. On year. Um, you know, I, 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 I think that the, the only solution really to this is to, to use more pre-manufactured and off-site techniques uh, and to select the right one for the given, the given context. Um, so uh, there's definitely a move, a move towards it in, in that regard. One thing I would add to that is the necessity to, to think about the procurement process, though. Right. Uh, and for us, we have to start thinking about how we procure houses with regards to design for manufacturing assembly, rather okay. than manufacturing for design. So th there's a necessity to start thinking about those procurement models in, t in, in order that they can unlock the potential and provide a pipeline of supply uh, such that you can start to scale that the level of offsite delivery. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I think that kind of leads us on to the, the, the next question from Mark, and Mark's asking, eh, I'll pose this one to you, Mila, why should students learn more about off-site, um, particularly when it only, you know, it only makes up 10% of, you know, construction at the moment, so if you were a, a student at the moment or a young person, why would it be necessary if you want to get involved in construction to learn more about off-site? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you very much, Mark. Well, I think it has to do, uh, there's two sides to it, to it. Firstly, it's all about future-proofing your career. It may be 10% according to official statistics at the moment, um, if that's where you're getting, uh, the data you're getting. Uh, but it is up and coming and we are seeing it growing. Um, it's used, we do sometimes see different offsite systems used uh, within traditional construction as well. Uh, you often see, let's say, precast um, precast cladding panels going onto buildings, which would normally be considered uh, traditional traditionally built buildings. So um, I do think that it's definitely on the rise and it's growing. It also provides opportunities for things that uh, students and college uh, lecturers. Uh, students and college attendees are quite interested in, such as increased digitization, um, that CAT CAM integration, which lets you design something and then seeing, built, seeing it built uh, through a semi-automated equipment, um, as well as uh, the digital the digital modeling site, um, increased uh, increased sustainability performance, etc. You know, those are all great key things which um, stu students from universities and colleges would be quite interested in. Um, and I do think that the other side of the argument is not that 10%. Uh, for example, we're just reading, you know, the latest C CIOB magazine, if people can see that. Um, and that was talking about how, okay, if we do uh, actually calculate um, within the output of off-site construction also the architect's design time or uh, all the other supporting industry almost then off-site construction is actually much more than the official statistics so it all depends on how we how we calculate it okay also Mila just to carry on but uh, just to let you know we've only got time for one more question and then we have to move on but just to let the participants know there'll be another opportunity for another Q&A breakout section so please keep your questions coming but the final question for this, this part, Mila, again, it's just carrying on from what you were talking about. This driver, like although it's only 10%, the driver of sustainability, can you explain more about this quite, quite quickly? 
Yeah, of course, that's actually quite a key point. Uh, so in the learning materials, you see how offsite construction targets the three pillars of sustainability, including economic and environmental and social. Uh, we've talked about that quite a lot. That's quite extensively covered. But the key point for me is really that design for manufacture and assembly plus disassembly piece in which we have a kit of parts and those parts can be disassembled, maintained and replaced. Um, somebody mentioned Port Cabin, very successfully do that, for example. And, and in this way, uh, we help to contribute the built environment towards a more circular economy. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting discussion there. And then once again, just to let participants know, keep the questions coming. There'll be another Q&A breakout session uh, in the next 20 minutes. Next up, we're going to hear from Katrina Jordan. Katrina is going to walk us through the online platform and assets. Um, Katrina is a chartered architect. She is also a lecturer at City of Glasgow College and one of our chief trainers in the Offsite Ready programme. Hi everyone, my name is Katrina Jordan. I am a lecturer at the City of Glasgow College. I am an architect and I am a chartered architect. I'm going to take you through our online platform, which can be found at www.offsiteready.com or www.offsiteready.co.uk. The home page or interface has our signature logo, hashtag Offsite Ready, with our signature strapline, Knowledge for Change. In the top left corner, we have the same logo, which will always direct you back to this page. So wherever you are on the website, if you want to go back to the beginning, you always you can click on the top left button. Along the top, we have four tabs, home, events, training materials, resources. I'm going to talk you through each one. First of all, we have what is Offsite Ready? So if we click on that, it will take you to a description of the project, what the project is, the project initiative, who the projects are and what are the project targets. But most importantly, who will benefit from the project? The construction industry as a whole, workforce, skilled workforce, upskilling workforce or reskilling the workforce and the education from grassroots level through to further and higher education. We also have quotes from Stephen Good, Chief Executive of Construction Scotland Innovation Centre and Ian Hughes, Strategic Partnerships Director of CITB Scotland. CITB are the project funders for the Offsite Ready project. Then we have the project partners along the bottom. Construction Innovations Centre, Moby, Quick, Edinburgh Napier University, City of Glasgow College and Class of Your Own. If you click on the tabs on their logos, it will direct you to their homepage and where you'll be able to find out more about what the partners are currently working on. At the top we have an events tab. This will tell, us, tell you of any up and coming events, which will predominantly be webinars now. The events will, will predominantly be train the trainer events in offsite construction through the application of the learning mod materials and modules. We then have the most important part of the website, the training materials, which cover the seven modules Offsite fundamentals, digital design, estimating and commercial, logistics, offsite manufacture, on site placement and assembly, management and integration, and then we have a teaching support system as well. And then a final tab resources. So, sorry, I just want to touch back on, on the training materials. So, if we click on the offsite fundamentals, This will direct you to the fundamentals teaching material. So you have a module synopsis, topics that are covered in the module, and the meta skills that can be acquired from the module. 
We have a module descriptor, which will talk you through the module, the module outcomes, the content within the learning materials. Then we have the learning materials, which Mila talked through the, the off-site fundamentals resources. All you need to simply do is click on the download slide deck and you'll be able to download the editable PowerPoint. Similarly, with the fundamentals booklet, you're able to download that, which will appear here. If we scroll down, we have great resources here, Metaskill resources. We've got things like creating business cases, problem solving, working in teams. If you're then able to download these slides. So if we take the business case one, for example, which will tell you what the learning outcome is, in this one, we have three learning outcomes and then tasks, almost like assessments, activities that, that you can give to the, to the learner, examples and solutions and then activities that they'll be able to carry out and that will be able to produ be produced as evidence in teaching and learning. And then finally, our last tab is our resources any additional resources at interactive learning. As Neela mentioned before, we have seven modules taking you on a learning journey through teaching material. The seven modules encapsulate the whole life cycle of a building, project from design through to maintenance following the REBA plan of works. We have on, hosted in the website, assets, references, video content, course materials, booklets, digital assets, interactive learning through animations and infographics. We also have a teaching support pack, which is invaluable um, and can be integrated, integrated into the content into your, of your modules covering a range of levels from skilled worker, supervisors to manager. Combining interactive learning with technical content, providing your, your learner with interactive learning and then saying to them, go away, research this using the technical content and find out more, which, would, which covers the le all the levels with tasks and questions and activities integrated throughout the whole project. <clears throat> Really excited about this website, about the content that's been produced. We hope you can utilise it. We think the website is easy to use. The slide decks are easy to download. The information is easy to download to, to en enhance your learning journey. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back everyone. Uh, there's lots of questions that are coming in just to let you know. Um, there will be another opportunity for a Q&A session uh, just after this. But just to let you know we're now moving on to Mila again, who's going to provide an overview of the video content and show you how to use the modules. The first module she's going to focus on is the Offsite Fundamentals module. Oh, after that, okay. Dr. Mila Duncheva here. Uh, I've led the creation of the off-site ready knowledge content on behalf of Edinburgh Napier University with the help of my colleagues such as Andrew Livingston, who we're going to hear from in a minute talking about digital design. Now, I have a PhD in architecture specifically in productivity measurement of off-site construction systems from the University of Strathclyde and ever since I've been working on great off-site projects uh, at Edinburgh Napier University and through this off-site ready project alongside our other partners we're sharing and creating new content for you which is great. So we're going to dive straight, in, straight into the off-site fundamentals module and specifically the slide pack that you have available as a demonstration of the type of content that you can use um, in your in your own learning material so 
I'm going to go ahead and jump to my PowerPoint slide now. So we've got here the the offsite um, the offsite fundamentals the offsite fundamentals slide slide pack. And what you can see here straight away is that this slide deck is editable uh, after you download it directly from from the offsite ready website. What that means is that you can change this, you can change any content available on it. Um, so that should be really easy for you to use. Um, the next thing you're going to see is that we have a lot of great images provided by our industry partners. So thank you very much to CCG OSN based in Glasgow as well as Langarook, which really helped to show uh, what offsite is. It's all about moving work to the factory environment. Now, I do want to to raise a little note of caution. If you do edit these slides uh, in any way, please make sure to use the exact same captions as we have. So please do not change the captions in terms of who they were provided by, um, etc. Especially the, um, the images later on, they talk about the offsite awards. Um, it's quite important to keep those consistent. So you notice that Offset Fundamentals uh, follows uh, a really uh, a structure in which we start with introducing the main definitions um, and why there's a need why there's a need to to do this because of a real lack of consistency in the sector and this was identified from a House of Lords um, committee report towards the end of 2018. So. Modern methods of construction are really all about increasing business efficiencies or achieving better quality, improving customer satisfaction, or increasing the predictability of delivery time scales. So it's all about obtaining better products in less time with less resources. So in this way, MMC uh, do not, uh, are, but are not limited to off-site construction is that offsite construction is a way to achieve MMC or modern methods of construction. And offsite is really all about adding substantial value to a product uh, in the manufacture or pre-assembly of components in a factory before assembly into the final location. And we've tried to make this um, as, as clear as possible. So we've also got um, this diagram, which you can see, you know, which parts of the MMC framework correspond to the offsite framework and what differences are there between them. And then we also go ahead and introduce other key terminologies such as design for manufacture and assembly um, and DFMA plus D, which adds the disassembly component. So I think you're already starting to understand why the offsite fundamentals module is a really good one to start with, to make sure that all your learners are on one the same page, on one the same level, and that they also understand the differences between the different systems, subassemblies, analyzed, volumetric, hybrid, etc. And you can see there's a slide along with the image. Um, that explains what each of the, these systems are. For example, for panelized, we have open, closed, and SIPs, volumetric, subassemblies, etc. Now, you also have um, some slides showing you the benefits of offsite construction, again, with a nice graphic showing the, the triangulation between sustainability, value, and efficiency, and an infographic showing the main drivers that we touched upon with Robert earlier. Um, now, we do have in the booklet also a table which lists each of these drivers and how offsite reacts to the drivers in case that helps you with preparation for your for your lecture and integrating them this content into your curriculum um, we've got some great residential examples provided by our, uh, by our industry partners uh, and a big thanks to uh, canary wharf can, uh, contractors who provided these images of the Wood Wharf project develop, being developed right now um, in central London. So this is really great inspirational project, as well as the this cancer centre, uh, kindly provided by Wenick Buildings um, via the Construction Wales Innovation Centre. So you see, we've got lots of great examples here that you can use to really illustrate what offsite construction is all about. Um, and I would urge you to have a look at the notes section as well. Um, because you may find some useful information such as about this project there's some additional information that you can use and of course offsite is not only about new build it's only about it's also about retrofit and it can be integrated in infrastructure projects as 
well. Now, the remaining topics follow a very similar structure um, of some images, a combination of images and text, typical PowerPoint slides, which you can use off the shelf um, to introduce some of the main topics of off-site construction, including the different levels of automation, which typically exist um, in, com in different combinations in one the same factory, um, and the process life cycle, which was this image was kind of provided by the Supply Chain Sustainability School, and what happens at each stage of the process life cycle, etc. So I'm not going to go into into the rest. You can you can have a look at the by themselves, uh, some information about steel, concrete, and timber, and some nice history. Just to emphasize uh, towards the end that you know offsite construction isn't anything new. It's been around since at least the middle age, since at least the middle ages has evolved since then. Uh, for architects like Frank Lloyd Wright, etc., the Camus system, the Nakagin capsule tower, and if you there's a nice summary for you and. Uh, some infographics to support your learning as well available. But I want to show you that how easy it is to rearrange this slide. Let's say if I want to have a little bit of a softer introduction in which I would spend a little bit more time introducing the topic of offsite and its evolution, I can very easily move this history start slide to the beginning. You know, that's completely up to me as the trainer. This is a very flexible approach to learning. So thank you very much uh, for, uh, for joining our knowledge for change on offsite fundamentals and I can't wait to see you use these materials. Thanks Mila, that was really interesting and I hope that shows everyone how they can use the content and integrate it into their own uh, training materials. Next up we have Andrew Livingston. Andrew Livingston is a structural engineer and also a lecturer at Edinburgh Napier University. He's going to talk to us about the digital design module and walk us through how you can use it. Hello, my name is Andrew Livingston. I am currently completing my PhD in Automated Code Compliance for Structural Timber Design for Building Information Modeling within Edinburgh Napier University. I have been with the university for seven years, lecturing and working on a number of high profile projects, including the Dyson Student Village that was constructed by Carbon Dynamic up in Invergordon. Before working for the university, my industry, industry background is that of a structural engineer with over 24 years of industry experience, primarily with volumetric off-site construction. In regards to the off-site ready knowledge for change, there is one fundamental module and six technical modules as follows. Off-site fundamentals, digital design, estimating and commercial, logistics, off-site manufacture, on-site placement and assembly, and site management. Each of the six technical modules follow the full project life cycle, summarised within six sections. Digital design, procurement, health and safety, management and planning, factory operations and site operations. The resources provided for each of the seven modules include a module descriptor, a booklet that contains the written material, PowerPoint slides similar to that you've already seen within the off-site fundamentals module, talking head videos, infographics and video animations. For example, let's have a look at the digital design animation that showcases the project uh, completed by Carbon Dynamic.
digital design. It is important to understand the advantages of computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing process over the design, manufacture and the on-site installation for off-site construction. That may involve the use of building information modelling authoring software, or BIM, for the creation of three-dimensional models that all of the manufacturing and construction drawings will be generated from, or the use of computer numerical control systems, for example, automated robotic routers or nailing bridges, all with the purpose of enriching the manufacturing process within a controlled environment. There is, however, a structure for the successful implementation of digital design set out within the standards and the guidance documents, which are listed and discussed within the module material. The three-dimensional models that are used during the procurement phase to create bills of quantities and the cutting lists. Using BIM-enabled software, you will be able to link the model with the pricing data sets. When doing this, you'll always have the up-to-date bill of quantities, thus avoiding mistakes during costing and procurement, as quantities are changed automatically. When using this parametric approach, it allows the design team to test different design options and therefore limit the need to create new bills of quantities for each iteration of the design. Within the software, the price is linked to the specified material or components used, as well as the type of off-site construction system utilised. Also, the use of a three-dimensional model allows each of the project teams to fully scrutinise the assembly and the logistic for each stage of the project. Health and safety. The impact of off-site construction on health and safety has been proven repeatedly and is often highlighted as a major benefit of off-site construction. However, the impact of health and safety on the design is a different subject and it's important to understand how health and safety can influence the material, products and system choices during the design. During off-site construction processes, there are numerous stages that need to be thought through at the design stage, such as the manufacture, transport and assembly. These stages have different health and safety concerns, the need for a specific assembly order of units, modules or panels can impact the design of the building and how elements fit together. Thank you. You now have knowledge for change in off-site fundamentals and digital design within off-site construction. Okay, thanks everyone. And now we're back to our Q&A session. Just to remind everyone again that you can put your you can pose your questions to uh, our trainers in the plan in the panel below. But there's been lots of really good questions coming in. I'm really pleased to see there's been a lot of active participation and some really good and challenging questions. But uh, I've got a question, Katrina, for you um, just now. And the question is, you know, um, how, as I, if I'm an FE lecturer or trainer. How is this an upskilling program? It's, it looks like good resources, but how can I how, how can I then use this within my existing program, and how can it be how can it how can it be integrated within my own course? Where would I know where to, how to how to put it in? So, uh, thanks, Kay. Um, thank you for the question. Um, so, the offsite ready program has has many benefits, and the content has many benefits. The content is uh, free to download, it's free to access and it's covering the seven modules um, covering the full life cycle of a building project. It's flexible and the educator can cherry pick what, which area they want to cover. The content fits into the current curriculum and that is shown in the training support pack. Um, it also shows in the training support pack um, how a new module could be created. Um, but also provides suggested delivery and suggested um, assessment methods covering the three area levels, so an introduction level, a medium and an advanced level. We've carried out a qualifications mapping exercise across the UK, identifying um, courses um, at FE and HE level 
um, that were currently being taught and where we felt that there was a link to off-site construction where the modules could be introduced and where there was a missing link as well to off-site construction. We produced that in the teaching pack and we've identified the subject area and which modules we think would be appropriate for that subject area. So we have um, seven modules um, and also we have our Udemy platform which is a, an interactive learning site and it has the video content on there covering the, the, the seven modules so that the educator can cherry pick specific areas um, um, or sp sorry specific um, modules for for the for their learners to use that that's great that sounds as if it's really flexible then in terms of learning and it means then that the educators can maybe use one or two modules they yes. can use full module and they can integrate it in i think the mapping as well makes it sound as if it's relevant in terms of current qualifications and standards as well thank you katrina there's another question that's just come in uh, andrew it's probably um more your area and it's from matt w wilson and Matt is asking us, what level of BIM would you see as a valuable and realistic, um, uh, realistic one to use for UK national house builders? Well, currently there's only really what BIM level two that we've been asked to to get to. Um, it's not so much about the level; it's about what you're using the model for. If you're using it for um, additional additional information other than just the construction drawings. So it's not so much about the level; it's about what you want out of the pro out of the model. Okay, and also there's been some other questions coming in. Um, Stuart Stuart agrees with you, eh, Rob, earlier on about the driver has to be um, from pr procurement, and there's got to be less emphasis in short term cost savings, and this more increasing, you know. Um, drive towards being more environmental and economic for the whole cost um, as well. So I was just going to ask you, uh, Robert, to go back to that and to discuss these drivers. It's okay that we can see this in this platform today and other, other, other people who are involved in the profession agree, but how can this change? What can happen to make these things, to put these things in place? Yeah, sure. And a lot of the questions sort of in the, the, the forum chime with us as well. You know, and, and the necessity to move towards um, this whole life cycle value, uh, and to think about the asset in terms of of, of it. You know, through the through its, uh, the duration of, of what it when it's built. Um, I, you know, so that whole life cycle sort of value proposition, uh, and in, in that respect, the the digitization stuff that Andrew's speaking to, how that can unlock some of that that potential, and and correspond how that folds into that over that that procurement process as well. So we're not procuring on lowest cost, lowest, lowest quality. We're actually procuring on the the value of the system, the environmental credentials of it, um, thinking about how it can impact the flow supply chain, thinking about the social value that, that can create, especially if, if you're thinking about the the resource you're utilising. Uh, how you're adding value to that that resource ideally locally within that supply chain and integrating it into build assets through a factory based approach so the the procurement process uh, in some manner or, or means has to try and uh, embrace that uh, and start to move towards uh, the approach of procuring in regards to design for manufacture in the same way rather than than uh, manufacturing for design so we have to try and synthesize the procurement process with the capabilities and the capacity of the sector in order that that capacity can can raise up and indeed the, the capabilities can, can evolve and those things can work in, work in tandem and really start to unlock the potential of manufacturing the built environment. Okay. Um, also, uh, I've got a question here for Mila and it's about the actual learning once again and someone has asked uh, Mila can you tell us more, um, you know, we're, we're talking about this as, as an educator's toolkit, but can you let us know more about the industry partners and the, how much input has industry had on these training materials? 
Yeah, of course. Uh, that's a great question, Kane. Firstly, thank you very much. I know we've got a few people on the call uh, from our industry partners, so thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, we've had a lot of people involved both in reviewing the content, including the competency framework based upon which everything else is based, as well as in the creation of the offsite fundamentals module, which we, which you saw. We had a lot of feedback going backwards and forwards to make sure that it was aligned with all the industry's perceptions and actual application of offsite. But in specific, we had um, Amy Price from the Offsite Awards and Radar Communications who contributed with images. We had uh, Lisa Anvers from Ilke Homes, Roman Barron from Canary Wharf Contractors, and Bentley from Rider Levitt Bucknell um, in London, very big QS, uh, QS practice, as well as, of course, Offsite Solutions Scotland and uh, all of the key partners there, including Nicola Jackson, Chairman from Robertson Timber Engineering, David Crawford, Callum Murray, Chris Murray from CCG, um, from Bass Project, Stuart Delgano from Stuart Mill Timber Systems, um, as well as the moment we're working with Matt Stevenson from SNRG. Uh, and that's only a very, uh, very brief, so six links list of the key people um, and there's, there's many more people who are involved in the project as well so just emphasizing that collaborative nature of the learning materials okay okay and um you know katrina touched on it earlier on so after today if the someone is watching this and they then want to take the training materials where would be the best place mila to start with the content uh, i know they can go on to www.offsiteready.com so can you just explain to them how they would use it? Yeah, of course, yeah, that, that's a great question. And later on, we're going to touch a little bit on the teaching support system. So obviously on the Offsite Ready uh, landing page, we've got a video which will uh, kind of reiterate some of the key points we've talked about today about how the content can be used, the different levels, etc. And afterwards, I suggest you go through the fundamentals module. Um, as well as the teaching support system. Now, it depends on you how you want to start. Um, the teaching support system uh, will basically guide you through what different modules there are, how you can use, how you can integrate them into new modules or existing curriculum, um, key references that you can use, um, etc. So that's really about how to use the offsite content into your existing program delivery, whether you're a private trainer provider uh, working in a school, at a college, or a university. Um, and the Offsite Fundamentals module, you see, has quite a lot of content there, uh, workshops, as well as uh, slide packs. And there's also an example recording of a live lecture in an architectural technology program. Um, so I, I suggest that you firstly have a look at the teaching support system, watch a couple of videos, browse through the slides, um, and really see where you want to start. You may want to start with the fundamentals plus one workshop, and that is great, that's fine for the first year, and then move up gradually with some site visits, factory visits, and more extensive modules, etc. Thanks, Mila. Um, we've just probably got time for one more question, uh, but before that, we've also had some inquiries from some of you today asking that you, you're already involved in industry and you, you maybe are involved in panelised systems and you go to trade fairs or whatever, and they've been asking about the content, particularly the digital assets. Can they use our content? It's a really good way for them to go out and promote off-site. And they were just saying, you know, uh, the teaching pack, is it possible for them to use this content as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, all the, that's, that's kind of the whole point of the project, so definitely go out uh, and use it. We, it is shared under Creative Commons Share Alike license, which means that uh, so, uh, so long as you attribute authorship to the Offsite Ready project, you're free to use it. The slides are also editable. You can share the PDFs. Uh, you can use it um, as much as your heart desires uh, with industry and also within education. Um, and yeah, you can use it for um, you can use it for non-commercial purposes uh, as part of the license. So as much as you're free to use it, uh, you know you shouldn't charge people for the content, and it was created free of charge. Okay, okay. So I think um, I don't know whether we have what, time for one more question. So um, Robert, I'll pose this one to you if you could answer it very quick, quickly. Someone has asked, you know. Um, how do we ensure, you know, if, if we're going to move towards a more robust, multi-skilled, you know, um, workforce, how do we make this happen? You know, you spoke about a pipeline of talent. So if you could just say briefly, you know, going forward, how can we make this happen? How can we, yeah, 
uh, well, uh, I, I think it's really uh, there's really emphasis on us. I think to showcase uh, the opportunities that reside within this type of approach. Uh, often the analogies are drawn with the car industry and the sort of training schemes that reside within that apprenticeship models, etc. And I think having close, closer affiliation between academia, the colleges, uh, and the industry partners, uh, so that we can embed um, the industry requirements quicker into the into the education into the delivery of the education uh, and I, th I think that's a lot of the work that we've been trying to do here at Edmund Napier and I think through this this project and this platform there's a real opportunity to accelerate that that further and obviously working closely with the likes of Construction Scotland Innovation Centre, Moby, uh, et al, we can really start to make a lot of traction in that, in that regard. Thanks Rob, thank no you. Now we're ready to move on to the very last part of the webinar today and we're going to move on and where we're going to hear from Stephen Good. Stephen Good is CEO of Construction Scotland Innovation Centre but he was also the former designer and architect at CCG who were responsible for the Commonwealth Athletes Village where they built 700 uh, houses in 700 days in a sustainable way using modern methods of construction. When I started working um, particularly on housing projects um, with um, a construction organisation called CCG, so um, CCG Scotland Limited back in the, uh, the kind of early 2000s, um, were very forward thinking uh, and worked with a range of, um, at the time, timber frame manufacturers delivering um, housing solutions for local authorities and, and um, uh, uh, registered social landlords and housing yeah. associations particularly. Um, and uh, there was a number of opportunities that came along where, um, because of the design process, because of the manufacturing process, because the clients uh, often had um, some house types that their committees had developed like to use on multiple sites, but with their own um, kind of flavour, depending on the architecture that was necessary to place making. There was always a, a kind of core system architecture that sat below it. So using the car analogy, the kind of the chassis was yeah. fairly consistent from one site to another, um, even across sometimes different clients. Um, but the, the construction team at CCG, the design team at Anderson Bell Christie, where I worked at the time, and, and other um, consultant partners were always keen to explore how you could um, maximise the opportunity, I guess, around uh, uh, that mass customisation approach. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, over the course of the, the kind of early 2000s and the mid 2000s, um, led to uh, CCG's interest um, around that time to really look at how they could start to develop uh, in-house within their organisation the capability to manufacture. Um, in the way the Germans, the Austrians, the Scandinavians at the time were, were um, kind of renowned for, yeah. uh, and very much look at the off-site manufacturing capability, how you could take, uh, as an organisation, they were they were probably building seven or 800 houses a year for a range of different clients that were all similar, but because of the, the different clients, different design teams, different, um, different uh, you know, sites. partners, sites, conditions, that sort of thing, yeah. um, there were always wee variances that you sure. sort of knew in the back of your head you could um, you could put a system in place that would help manage that and still offer the choice, but actually really maximise the opportunity for um, for underpinning it with a, with a core system approach. Um, and that uh, opportunity, I suppose, came full circle in 2014 uh, when I joined uh, CCG uh, yeah. as, as their design director to work with a, a small team at the, at the beginning to um, deliver, I suppose, the, the ambition that uh, the the owners of the organisation had um, to develop a, a part of their business that would focus on um, achieving off-site manufacturing uh, and the development of their uh, CCG OSM, off-site manufacturing um, part of the company, that would deliver a, a ultimately what turned out to be a 12, uh, 12 13 million pound investment in a state-of-the-art yeah. off-site manufacturing capability. Um, delivering panelised timber frame solutions um, in, in Scotland, which at the time was, this was back in 2007, uh, when the organisation started looking at it, 2010, uh -huh. when they delivered their uh, 130,000 square foot manufacturing um, facility in Camus Lang. Uh -huh. uh, it was really revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Um, 
offsite manufacturing, you know, MMC, advanced manufacturing um, is almost common in every conversation we have now uh, with clients. Um, but back in 2007, you can imagine it wasn't a, yeah. wasn't the first thing that's going <laughs> to mind. But um, okay. but CCG's kind of vision uh, and their um, their pursuit, I suppose, of finding better ways of building the buildings they were delivering for their customers um, was uh, was really inspiring, and that what that's what. Um, that's what um, caught my attention, and uh, ultimately, yes, it was a really uh, interesting opportunity to work with a company that had uh, that had huge vision, huge passion, a great team um, committed to delivering uh, something fairly um, fairly unique. And uh, at the time, probably in a UK context, um, certainly in a, in a Scottish context, there weren't many um, who were doing the same sort of thing at scale. Um, so, no, I mean, I think just a, a final word for me is a massive, um, a massive kind of. Uh, Pat the back and uh, and applause and shout out to all those partners that have supported the project to CITB uh, and their involvement and in, uh, and vision. I think to uh, to fund yeah. um, the the project uh, from the from the outset and um, yeah, just um, more more power to everybody that's um, committed to seeing this through and yeah. and delivering some great out- outcomes and in um, particular. In particular, uh, thanks to the students that have already been involved, but indeed to those that are going to be involved uh, and um, and all those uh, individuals that are going to benefit from the material. I hope they find it. Um, I hope they find it useful. I hope they feedback their comments, and and um, it's not a uh, it's not a static process. So it will always be evolving and developing. Uh, so um, those that use it at the beginning, um, your feedback and input into how uh, it goes forward, I think will be um, will be instrumental. So um, so yeah, yeah. Well, well done everybody, and uh, and let's keep going with it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Stephen. That was Stephen Good, CEO from Construction Scotland Innovation Centre. Just to let you know that today is just the start of the training events and these will run over the next few months. Our project partners MOBI will be delivering a number of free sessions to universities and colleges throughout England and Construction Wales Innovation Centre will be doing the same in Wales. We will carry on delivering training uh, online uh, over the next few months and seminars in Scotland too. So if you're an educator or a trainer who would be interested in us hosting a session for you, please get in touch with us. Or even if you're a construction company who wants some in-house training delivered, let us know. You can find all the details of our training materials on www.offsiteready.com. Before we go as well, uh, we're going to hear one more time from Mila, who is going to take us through the teaching support system. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Mila Doncheva here. I just wanted to summarize all the great work that the whole project team has been doing. So on the web platform, what you see is that you have available training resources. Uh, so we've got seven modules for you to use, out of which the first one, Offsite Fundamentals, is completely ready and ready for you to integrate into your learning journey. So the first module is called Offsite Fundamentals, and we run through the slide deck of that. The second one is Digital Design, and you have a flavor for that uh, from Andrew and the available animation. Afterwards, we've got Estimating and Commercial, followed by Logistics, Offsite Manufacture, on-site placement and assembly, and finally, management and integration. So you see how these follow the whole life cycle of the, of the building project, starting from design through to, uh, to the construction site and follow on maintenance afterwards. Now, within each of these modules, we've got a big variety of really flexible, um, really interactive online content for you. And these include all these assets shown behind me, behind me right here, including a reference and resources pack, uh, rich video content, written written course materials and your booklets, digital assets for you to use, such as the animations and talking head videos, infographics, all that really great interactive stuff. Um, and towards the end of the project, your online learning platform, uh, which is our Udemy website, will be uploaded as well, would be created as well. So lots of great stuff for you to dig, dig your teeth into as you become more offsite ready with knowledge with knowledge for change. Now on the website you also 
find that we have another section called teaching support system. Now this is quite important uh, because it will show you how you can integrate this available content into your modules or into your units or even um, at, a, at a school level uh, which class of your own um, will, will cover in more detail in their, in their events. Now in the teaching support system, you'll notice that we're using the, the same icons that you see here, especially this one here, rich video content, you'll notice that in the booklets. Through that icon, we'll identify how the talking head videos and other content um, really integrates with and corresponds to the more technical, more lengthy book booklets uh, which we have available. So that's how the more with the more interactive content corresponds to the more technical content so that you can ask your learners for example after they watch the video you can ask them okay to find out more please find out more on the subject what you think etc now within the booklets within each booklet you also have questions um, and reading materials um, etc et the teaching support system guides you through all that content the content is also level targeted at different levels of learners so ranging from skilled workers through supervisors to managers as well as senior managers and there's different icons used um, within the modules which you'll find in the teaching support system to help you guide you uh, to extract the most relevant content for your learners or to adapt the content for different target audiences. Um, you also find in the same teaching support system um, the BEX or the Build Environment Exchange Pathway, which you can implement through augmented learning to really increase that pathway to upskilling. That's what the Build Environment Exchange is all about. So you find a very simple PDF along with accompanying videos of workshops um, about how you can implement the Build Environment Exchange at your organization. And now, without any further ado, uh, we're also gonna uh, we also would like to invite you to our upcoming webinars from about what you're going to hear from our other industry partners. So stay tuned to become more offsite ready with knowledge for change. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, and that was Mila just explaining to you that there will be more up and coming sessions and these will be hosted uh, freely over the up and coming months. Uh, online and hosted by Moby in England, a Construction Wheels Innovation Centre in Wales. And we'll be doing other sessions uh, through the over the next few weeks. So if you're an educator or a trainer who's interested in this, please get in touch. You can also follow us on our LinkedIn page at Offsite Ready, and you can look at any of the mater course materials on www.offsiteready.com. <clears throat> If you have any questions that we weren't able to answer today, we will get back to you and we will answer them. We'll also put them on uh, our Offsite Ready page. And if there are any other queries about the learning materials or how you can use them, then please get in touch. Uh, we, the Offsite Ready project would like to thank CITB, who without them this would not have been possible. We would also like to thank the team at Edinburgh Napier University, who uh, have had designed all the learning materials and also everyone within the Offsite Ready project who's made this possible. Also a special thank you to the technical team who have been working behind the scenes today and made all this possible. This was supposed to be a, a, a physical launch and we've had to move to digital because of current circumstances so we hope that you've been able to get the most out of this platform today. Lastly but not least we would like to thank you all for coming on to our webinar today. We hope that you have enjoyed this experience and you've taken something from it and we hope you then move on and use our learning materials. Thanks very much folks, have a great day and please stay, stay safe. Welcome to Offsite Ready, the project which delivers knowledge for change. The aim of the project is to increase the knowledge and skills capabilities of trainers and industry on offsite construction. Offsite construction offers many benefits. The factory environment provides a cleaner and safer place of work. Afterwards, in the construction stage, the rapid component-based installation of off-site systems can ensure that the project is also delivered on time. Today we are filming at the Trimble Technology Lab at Napier and we will show you a few tools including SketchUp Pro, TechLitEds, a drone and a scanner.
Is that is that